Can a book really change your life? I'm gonna share with you 10 books that have made a massive difference to my life. You might be thinking, well, I'm not a big reader. So all of the books that I'm gonna talk about, you can either read them or you can listen to them on Audible. So you've got a choice. And the way that books help us transform, they give us knowledge, but they also challenge the way that we think about things. And usually it's one small idea. I'm Ruth Kudsey, the founder of Ruth Kudsey Coaching. I transformed my life and my business and I'm passionate about helping others do the same. The first book that made a real difference to me is a book called Mindset by Carol Dweck. I was introduced to this when I was training as a teacher in about 2005. So at that time, Carol Dweck's principles were widely used in schools. And it's really this idea that you either have a growth or a fixed mindset. So a fixed mindset means that you believe that your performance and your results are because of your ability, your natural ability. Whereas if you've got a growth mindset, you believe that you can improve. As a former deputy head teacher and an educator, you could see this in action. Some kids, I'm a level five or I'm an A student and they went round with that label and they didn't necessarily work hard or think they could improve because they had that label and that worked if people were labeled that they were not so good and it's the same with everything oh my gosh the amount of times i've said that i can't play tennis have i ever really tried have i ever asked for feedback and improved no so sitting here today i can tell you if i really wanted to and this is the key if i really wanted to play tennis and get good I could. The big thing for this is that it's lifelong learning, where our abilities are not fixed. We can get better at everything. Book number two is called Breaking the Habit of Being You by Joe Dispenza. So Joe Dispenza is a very, very interesting guy. And he is the person that finally convinced me that meditation was something that I needed to do. And the reason that he did is he talks about it from a scientific perspective. And I'm the kind of person that likes to do my research. So the way that he talks about it, the way that he explains energy, and the way that he explains where we are in the universe is incredible. I read this book and then I went and saw Joe with one of my very good friends. Um, We saw him in London and He blew me away, not only with his meditations, but also with the fact that the work that he does with people, which is all based on the power of the mind, has had outstanding results helping people overcome illness. He does talk about meditation in it and he explains about energy. And if you are like me and you are seeking evidence to prove that this is a good thing to do, I highly recommend it. It is a longer read, so dip in and out of it. Take your time. But when you are introduced to Dr. Joe, it's difficult to get him out of your mind. And his meditations are like something I've never heard before. It's like you're transported to a different world. Book number three is Grit by Angela Duckworth. Now, I'm gonna say this now. The writing is tiny, I don't know why but it's an amazing book. Angela wanted to find out why some people got results and some people didn't. Oh my gosh, this is right up my street. What she found is she did this thing called a grit score. And really it's about how much you stick at things. So yes, ability is important, but if you're not gonna stick at it, if you're not gonna keep going, if you're not gonna be resilient, you're not gonna get there. If you want to achieve something, the more committed you are to it, the more that you keep going no matter what, the more likely you are to get there. You look at different people and you're like, well, why are they successful? And often the people that are most successful, it's because they have this inner resilience and grit. And the thing is that we can all build on that. Part of it for me is about understanding that you've got everything inside you. And if you're really motivated and committed, you can do whatever you put your mind to. This book is peppered with positive psychology, which is something which I absolutely love. Um, Angela drops it in that Martin Seligman was her supervisor and she comes from a really strong psychology background. Her message is clear. Grit and resilience are what hold the secret to success 
for many people. So book number five, this book, I think, gave me the biggest aha moment. It's called The Big Leap. It's by someone called Gay Hendricks, and it's amazing. So he talks about upper limit problems, that we all have these limits that we set in our minds, of course, and that when we get to our limit, whether it's financial, whether it's happiness, whether it's joy, we often self-sabotage. And I'd always wondered, you know, my pattern was that something really good happened and I convinced myself that it couldn't continue to be good. So I'd self-sabotage, maybe I'd get drunk, maybe I wouldn't do something, maybe, and I would have these patterns of behavior and I made myself feel awful. I read the book and I was like, ah, it's because I had an upper limit problem. It's because I didn't believe that I could get there, or I could sustain it, and that was what was going on. And the other thing he talks about is our different zones, our zone of genius that thing that we can do and we find it really easy and we're in flow. The more that I've stepped into my zone of genius, and I think my zone of genius is teaching, training and coaching, the more that I find it easy. He talks about one of his clients and his client is, she is a housewife and it, she says that she really wants to be an author. And he says to her, okay, so how do you spend your time? And she said, well, I get up in the morning before everybody else and I make lunch for the kids and I make sure that they're all ready and I make breakfast for my husband and make sure that he's okay and he goes to work. I then drop the kids off at school. I then um, might do some shopping or I go home and I tidy the house. And then I usually have a little bit of a sleep. And if I've got enough time in the afternoon, I write. He was like, well, how much of a priority is writing for you? She's like, it's exactly what I want to be doing, but your behavior doesn't demonstrate that. So let's look at what's really going on for you. Because if writing is a priority, you'd be doing that first thing. Great, great read. I know that you'll love it as much as I do. Book number six is one of my favorite books ever. It's by an amazing guy called Hal Elrod. And he wrote a book called The Miracle Morning, which it isn't this book. It's a book called The Miracle Equation. And you'll see there is a similarity with some of the other books I've talked about. The Miracle Equation looks at why some people are successful and some people aren't. Can you tell that I'm slightly obsessed with this? I want to know what that secret is so I can help more people be successful. So the Miracle Equation says that these miracle mavens, these people that create miracles, that have this success, have a combination of two things. First of all, unwavering self-belief. I love it, unwavering self-belief. And actually, when he talks about it, when he talks through the examples, and he uses himself a lot, the unwavering self-belief, you do have flickers when you have self-doubt, but you come back into that self-belief. And I love this because self-belief is a muscle. We can build it. I know when I started my business back in April 2016, I never believed that I was going to have a business that would pay me the same income, because that's all I wanted at that time, the same income that I was earning in my job as a senior leader in a secondary school and do it on my terms. I didn't really believe it was possible, but there was a voice in my head that said, what if? And I held onto that sliver of self-belief and I built it and built it and built it. And as I got results, it grew and it grew and it grew. And with that, my dreams grew. And I was able to resign from my job in November that year. Bear in mind that I had a baby in the July, you can see that that was a pretty cool time scale. And that's because my belief grew. And as my belief grew, I stepped into who I needed to be and I took the action. Because the other thing that he talks about alongside unwavering self-belief is effort. We need to take effort. It needs to be sometimes difficult. We don't get success. Gosh, I wish I could build rock solid abs by sitting on my couch eating haagen or Ben & Jerry's. I prefer Ben & Jerry's. I wish that I could do that, lying on my couch, eating Ben & Jerry's and getting a six pack. That is not gonna work. That is not how success comes. I love it. It is a fantastic book. And really, I think that we can apply this to any area of our lives. Book number seven. This is a book. I'm just gonna set the scene. Imagine being on a yacht in Greece. Beautiful, clear water on my honeymoon reading this book. It's called Big Magic and it's by Elizabeth Gilbert. 
And the big thing that stood out for me is that there's lots and lots of ideas floating around the universe. And when we get an idea, if we don't catch it and do something with it, it goes to somebody else. She talks about how she had this idea for a book and she didn't do anything with it. And a couple of years later, one of her contemporaries bought out the book and she's like, that was my idea. But she hadn't told anyone the idea. The idea had been floating about and she hadn't done anything with it, so it had gone to somebody else. And I love this idea that there's this creativity out there for all of us to capture, but we have to do the work. It is beautifully written. I mean, she has such a way with words and it really taps into creativity and ideas. And the fact that, you know, there are infinite ideas, but we have to be open to them and we have to take action. Book number eight, The Universe Has Your Back by Gabriella or Gabby Bernstein. Gabby B as we all call her. Let's be clear, I was not into manifestation. I was not into any of this. And I remember my friend saying to me, have a read. I absolutely love it. One of the things I loved about this book is she says to you to write down um, all of the negative emotions that you're feeling around particular things. So you might be feeling angry at people and she gets you to journal it all out and to keep going and keep going until you're no longer feeling it. Oh my gosh, this was awesome. The first time I wrote, I think I needed more than one journal. Let's just put it that way. But it really helped me start to journal and start to understand what the purpose of that was. So the power of manifestation, the power of journaling, the power of connection. Gabriella Bernstein, The Universe Has Your Back. Book number nine. It couldn't be a book list without Brene Brown. The book that introduced me to her is Braving the Wilderness. And it really help me see that power of vulnerability. That when we're vulnerable, when we're open, when we're authentic, we encourage other people to be that. We don't need to be perfect. And actually vulnerability helps us connect with others and it helps us build those connections. She wrote this book, I think around when there was a lot of conflict and a lot of difference in America, especially amongst people's political leanings and it really made me think the way that we judge people because they believe something different to ourselves and this kind of black and white that we're right and somebody else is wrong it isn't true everything really is a shade of grey and the more that we can accept that we're not always right the more that we can accept others too and we can build relationships build communities it is a fantastic read. The way that she communicates is vulnerable but open and she encourages other people to be that way. If you're looking um, for something to watch of hers, check out Brené and Russell Brand. Honestly, it will make you laugh and cry in equal measures. Book number 10, Life Lessons from a Brain Surgeon by Dr. Rahul Jandil. Now, I love neuroscience. Who better to learn about neuroscience than a neurosurgeon? Some of the parts of the book may make you a little squeamish. He talks about brain surgery. He talks about opening the brain. That wasn't my favorite bit, but he also talks to you about things that we can all do to keep our brains healthy. He talks about neuroplasticity, which is one of my favorite things to talk about. But the standout thing that has made a massive difference to my life is he talks about the science behind intermittent fasting. He talks about how intermittent fasting is good for our brain and our cognition as well as our bodies. And what's really interesting is the way that he explained it. I was like, this is a no brainer. This isn't about weight. It's about well-being and it's about protecting my brain and my body for the future. The images that he paints of the brain, it's about possibility. It's absolutely brilliant. And it changed my life because it changed the way that I look at my diet and my food. So I'm gonna be a bit cheeky here. I'm gonna add one, maybe two other books. And the book that really changed my life is a book called, Is This It? The Smart Women's Guide to Finding Work You Love. It's a book that I wrote in 2017 that came out in 2018. It was an Amazon bestseller in three categories. It was shortlisted for the Business Book Awards. 
and it's really a book that is for the woman or the man, let's be honest, who finds themselves in a job that they don't love. And it's a book to take you on that journey of what next. My second book is being written as we speak, and it's going to be a bit different. It's much more about mindset and who you are. So I'd love to know, out of these books, which one of those really resonated with you? I'm going to leave the next video here. If you've enjoyed this, like it, subscribe, and ring that bell for the next video. I'll see you over there.